everyone. I'm Karen, AKA the Warp Spinster. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for joining me on my channel. It is a rainy, gloomy Sunday morning here. Temperature dropped 30 degrees, which was interesting. And I have every light in the place on to try to make up for the dim natural light going on here. I hope it's neither too bright nor too dim for you. I tried to get it adjusted as best I could. I am going to continue with stash busting my half square triangles. Never fear, my other project, first part of the project is still here. I'm still working on that, but I like to take a break and work on a variety of things instead of just seeing one through to the end. I get bored or I have a short attention span or something. Anyway, I have all of these half square triangles that are the same two fabrics. This is from my Kanga Yoga Quilt, and I have a lot of them. This doesn't begin to cover how many that I have, and I do not want them to go to waste. I could do any number of arrangements of half square triangles into blocks and quilts, and they're wonderful, and I love them, but I want to try something different. So for this project, I will need to square them up, however. And to do that, I'm going to use my handy dandy block lock ruler, half square triangle ruler. This is a six inch. They have them in a variety of sizes. I have no connection to them, though if I were getting a commission for selling these rulers, <laughs> I'd be a millionaire by now. The thing about these, I have to stand up to cut, sorry. The thing about these is that they have a channel cut into here that's a quarter inch wide, so that locks onto the seam. So when you are cutting it, the ruler isn't rocking. And get myself situated here, and it doesn't slip like it would if you were using just a flat ruler. So I do those two sides. Now if I had a decent mat here, well, I guess I can do it anyway, I can just spin it around, slide it down, and then I'm cutting these to two and a half inches because I think all of them can meet that common denominator. And I just continue to do that. I mind doing half square triangles much less since I got that ruler. I think I want to start out with three to try this out because an odd number generally is visually more pleasing than an even number. Go figure. And I'd already trimmed a couple. I knew I wanted to try three, so I did that much off camera before you came so you don't have to sit here and watch me trim half square triangles. If you're quilting with me, that's terrific. If you've got some half square triangles or if you're just watching, I'm glad you're here. Now, I want to have uh, like a sashing in between these and I want to audition how wide I want that to be. I have a lot of white in this one, which is okay. I like that all right, but I think for this version, I am going to want a bit less white. This would be finished width, roughly so, and I like this one better than this. This is going to be too much because I'm going to add in more white still. And this is, this is five eighths finished. So I'm going to say half inch in between. Given the seam allowance, I will need to cut an inch by two and a half. Since I squared those up to two and a half inches, let me get these pressed with my handy dandy, old fashioned, almost as old as I am iron. <laughs> and cut some, what did I say, one inch pieces here. I'm sitting down to do this cutting, which is not my best position. That one isn't going to quite make it, so I will leave that for phase one. 
So I'm using a variety of widths for that. All right, that will be enough to get us started, I think, Especially with my other one that I just tossed away. Some days I just, I don't know exactly why I'm getting out of bed in the morning because <laughs> I don't know where I'm at. All right, there's my other one. I'm trying very hard to not say all right and so as often as I generally do. So we could have a little game for how many times I say all right or so. So S-O, not so S-E. I am going to oh, I could cut those into two and a half, couldn't I? Hopefully without slicing that one. And those will be ready to sew together as soon as I turn on my machine. How are you all doing today? I hope that, well, anyone who's in the path of Hurricane Ida, I hope has found a safe place to evacuate to, to which to evacuate, whatever that should be. And I'm thinking about all of you, that's especially in New Orleans and elsewhere in Mississippi, it's, wow, you've got so much going on there right now. All right, let's start counting the all rights right now. Turn on my machine here and stitch these. Ah, the sound of my machine starting up. I am, of course, doing right sides together, scant quarter inch seam. I think I probably will press toward the, how do I want to do that? Press toward the strip just because I don't want to press back on these points. If I were to press it that way, I prefer not to. However, Since this is quite a light fabric, I may decide I need to, yes, because that will also lift the half square triangles off the surface of the quilt a little instead of the sashing. And that really is my preferred visual. So that, so that's what I will do. And as a consequence, that is what I will do. <laughs> and in light of that, that could get to be more annoying than the so, couldn't it? Ooh, that is bad. Let's try that again, Karen. Karen Marie Laura. Now you are asking, what am I going to do once I do this? And that's an excellent question. <laughs> Stay tuned while I figure that out. My sewing machine is probably about due for maintenance again, as much as I use it. Got all that, spent all that money on my Jeep to get it maintained and happy again. I should afford the same luxury to my sewing machine, which I've been using more than my Jeep the last year and a half. And I know I'm not making that, I'm not wearing a microphone, so I know you can't hear as well. The audio isn't quite as good when I go over and sew, so I will try to hold that to a minimum. Here we are. It can go this way or this way, it doesn't matter. I'm going to put it here. Now, I am a fan of slicing and 
moving things around. So, so this is two and a half. So I think I'm going to sl slice it at, I could do it halfway, but I don't, well, we'll try it. Goodness knows I have enough of these. If I cut it at an inch, that means I'm losing a quarter inch off there. Hmm. That's going to be that way anyway. I will cut an inch there, and then you can see that I like to slice things a lot. If I do an inch from here, then of course, it doesn't even have to be specific measurements. I can just cut it as I did with the first set of triangles I was doing. So this one I'm gonna cut at a half. And then I can do a number of things. I can slide that up and perhaps slide that up that I get a different look. I can slide that down a different amount, a random kind of amount. I didn't cut that very well, did I? I could add a sashing in between and not slide it, just have that insertion. Another piece. Should be the full length of the piece, but just for testing it out here. That's kind of fun. I could do a whole range of things in the same quilt. Or I could do just that. And these need not be the same width for that matter. I could start it out narrow here and wider on this side just for variety going into it. I could start sliding. Maybe some up, some down. Hmm. What do you think? What do you think? I do like the graduated widths of those strips, so I think I will do at least that. I was going to say I could just go ahead and cut those pieces and sew them on, but if I'm going to slide them, then they're going to be a different length. Think, Karen, think. What do you want to do? I suppose you're shouting out to me what you think I should do, and I'm... Am I not paying attention to what you're saying? Sorry about that. Oh, decisions, decisions. You'd think this was fabric made out of spun gold, wouldn't you? I kind of like that effect, but I also like the sliding. I may end up doing a quilt that has different combinations. So let's start out. Ooh, 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 ooh. All right, decision time, Karen. We're just going to start out with that. And I want a pretty thin strip in between, so I'll probably cut it three quarters of an inch. And this should be three quarters by seven and a half. And then the next piece, 
I want it to be half an inch. It'll be an inch. So I need a three quarter inch. And an inch. Or do I want it to be a little bit wider? Maybe a little bit wider. And I'm going to, instead of slicing really randomly, I want it to be a measurable amount instead of a 16th or a 24th or something. And seven and a half inches. See how well I trimmed and sewed and pressed. Seven and a half. Little scraps I can use for phase one. I don't know if they're really phases. I don't know what to call them. Lay these in order to make sure I've got them right. Nope, I didn't. I really got that one crooked. That's not good, Karen. It'll be all right for a test, and I'll just just the seam at that point, I guess. I trust you are brainstorming while I'm sewing and you'll have ideas for me. This time, I think I am going to press toward the, that wasn't so good there, press toward the sashing strip. I may change my mind once I start doing more of these if I decide this is what I want to do, but I'm taking the path of least resistance today. And I also seemed, you probably noticed this, <laughs> seem to make pieces that have an awful lot of seams on them. But that's what happens when you're subcutting small pieces. I guess crumb quilting, this is sort of crumb quilting, don't you think? It's crazy quilting for sure. Lots of seams, lots of seams. Of course, one could also do some embellishment on these. Sort of in the manner of crazy quilting. I've been thinking about ways I might do some embellishment in a kind of traditional way, but a modern vibe to it. We'll see how that goes. All right, last seam for this. Corrected for that cutting error there. And 
there we have something that needs some squaring up. <laughs> I need some pressing lessons. That's better. Perhaps still not great, but let's see what happens if we square this up a bit. That side looks about right there in relation to, it's this side that's a little wonky and it's the narrower piece. So it's more likely to go awry. After my last video, I promised I would put in a new blade or bring up a new cutter, and I did bring a new cutter. <laughs> but here we are with the same problem, mostly because I'm sitting down and going over a lot of seams. What do you think? I think that's interesting. I like that. This is such a tiny piece cut off there. But it's all right, and I do like the graduated sashing width there. Hmm. All right, that's an option. Now let's do one where we slide it a bit. I have to stand up again for this. And I'll probably edit out this bit where I'm doing this squaring up because you really don't need to watch it. I'm back with again three pieces. I think I'm going to do the same thing, the same sashing and the slicing. I didn't match those up. Is that all right? This is a prototype. So now's the time to make the decision. I think I do. When I, which is something you always do when you've got sashing, is you have to check to make sure you're lining them up across the sashing, which I didn't do on this prototype, but that's all right. It's a good reminder for me that when I do an actual piece, if I decide to do it like this, that I wanna line up across the sashing. Again, I'm going to do three and one and an eighth. Three quarters and one and an eighth. I don't know what I just said. I'm not even doing that. I'm doing this one. Karen Marie Laura, some days I really have to wonder. This is an inch wide, so I need two pieces that are two and a half inches, two slices. And we work on another prototype. I think I'm probably going to like them both, and I want to do prototypes of both of them because I want to see how they look together. I'll have to sew these together. can't get hold of my clippers today. I think perhaps it's a good thing I mowed the lawn yesterday and did the weed whacking. Well, <laughs> partly because it rained, of course, but also because I don't 
know that I want. That's what I love about this time with you and doing this kind of experimentation is that I'm not working on some masterpiece quilt or a sample for one of my patterns. I can just play. All right. Oh, I had done so well. Not saying all right. I'm going to slice again. Should I do it this? Yes, let me do it the same. So I did an inch there and three quarters of an inch from that. I'm going to stand up again so I don't get that funky slice I got last time. Start with an inch. All arranged. I should bring up my bottle of flatter, shouldn't I? Compress more exactly. What did I say? Three quarters? That's what it's going to be anyway. set of slices and these I'm going to let's shift this one up and this one down the question is how much up and how much down I think I want it to be actually kind of random I'm going to need to put a piece up there. I don't have to be precise about it at this moment in time. And a piece like that. I'm going to end up matching those up. That was plenty good sized for that. How will this work? I'm going to need oops, oops, sorry. Bump the tripod. A little bit more there. Of course, I'm always going to be able to trim. I need a little bit down here. I'm going to need quite a bit down there. Not as much there. And I have other pieces here I can use. Let's give him a generous amount. Yes, I know these are oversized pieces, but I want to do this prototype in a quick fashion. What kind of experience or, or playing around with crazy quilting or crumb quilting have you done? Have you done traditional crazy quilting? I have done a reasonable amount of it. it hasn't been my focus by any means, but it there's just I like handwork. And there's just something about sitting down and get these going the right direction. Sitting down and doing handwork while I binge movies or whatever is a nice thing to do sometimes. So I have done a fair amount of traditional. I've got a collection of beads and ribbons and threads and yikes. So much stuff. But I do also want to be thinking about hmm, <laughs> I think that one is going to go up more like that. Thinking about more modern takes on it. 
I have some ideas in my head, but the ideas in my head don't always translate well to fabric. Or they translate differently when I get to the fabric. Now I can be a little more accurate with where I want these to go. So I can, well, first of all, I can turn that off considerably. And I'll get the lengths first and then I'll square up the sides here, straighten the edges. Where so those are going to go. Now we're getting to scraps that are too small even for me. When I have leftover fabric and I'm cutting them into specific scrap shapes, oops, I generally don't, well not generally, I don't do under an inch and a half square. And at some point I'll bring out that inch and a half square project too. Now I'm going to get these straightened out before I put on the vertical sashing. What are the odds I'm going to end up swapping out these pieces if I'm not paying attention? Ooh, and that's an idea too. might be the next one I try. This poor old cutting mat. So I could, for example, move that out and this one here. Oh, I'm getting a funky arrow there, aren't I? That's kind of fun. Oh, that's kind of fun too. Huh, it's not quite the fractured crackle sort of look, but interesting. Interesting, interesting. I think if I were doing that, I'd go with this one where the arrow was kind of going that way. It's a little more than a quarter of an inch, but I could trim this down so that the seam is going to hit right there, and that would be exactly going up that way. Yeah. All right, this is over here, <laughs> and this is here. Nope, this is here. There we go. Eye on the prize, Karen. See, this is my problem. I'm, I'm constantly distracted. The squirrel syndrome. Interesting thing is I can focus and forget time once I'm on something, once I really focus on something, but I also can just get quite distracted, ready to try something different, however you want to call it. Whatever you want to say, I I have that trouble sometimes. Trying to be a little more careful on this prototype because it is not a good habit. Sloppiness is not a good habit to get into even if you're just working on prototype. Now, I need to cut the vertical sashing. And this piece is going to be good. I have so many different whites down in my studio. And you know, white is not white and black is not black. But... Hmm. And I want to do the graduated. And what did I say? I did three quarters of an inch and 
inch and an eighth, as I recall. So that is what I shall do. Three quarters of an inch and an inch and an eighth. I know that this may seem a little strange to some or futile to be cutting up small pieces into even smaller pieces and then sewing them back together, which is basically what we do to begin with. But I really hate to waste half score triangles because they take some time to make and it's just fun to play with scraps. There, there's a certain sense of accomplishment with getting scrap projects finished. Very, I can feel very self-satisfied <laughs> when I do it, even though it seems like it's not a huge accomplishment. I think part of it is in my previous career, there was never really an end point for anything. It just continued. There was no, okay, that job is well done. It, it was always a continuous thing, which in the context of the job, that was good. But now I find that I like to have endpoints for things. And this gives me endpoints. I can do smaller projects and gives me an endpoint, but I don't have any time pressure on it. All right, back to the task at hand. Let's stitch this. I'm thinking about doing a crumb crazy challenge, like a monthly challenge where you do a block or a little mini quilt or what I call a tossy each month and there'll be a prompt or a theme. So be thinking about that while I'm stitching these. And while you're maybe stitching as I am, I hope you're quilting with me. Honestly, when I edit this, I may end up speeding through it or cutting out these parts while I'm sewing. I don't want to be boring you all to tears either. All right, let's do this piece next for no particular reason. I do want to take a little time while I'm pressing here to thank those of you who watch these videos and those of you who subscribe and comment, especially. There's been a huge jump in views and subscribers, and I just appreciate that more than, more than you know. The subscribing and liking and commenting helps others to find this channel. And I 
just love connecting with you. So thank you. I'm very grateful. Every time I get an email that someone else has subscribed, I thank you by name <laughs> in my head. So it does not go unnoticed. Thank you. As I'm sewing these narrow strips, I'm thinking of some students in my underwater basket weaving classes. Underwater basket weaving is one of my patterns. And I've done, I don't know, three, I don't know how many classes on it. And I, people kept <laughs> complaining about, did I sew that on the wrong side? I did, all right, I swapped them around, but I'm okay with that. No, I didn't, no, I didn't, I'm right. Squirrel. There are, the sashing strips, and there are a lot of them, are cut one inch and finish half an inch, and I had so many people complaining to me about those one inch sashing, and what was I thinking, but I tried to do wider ones, but they just, they weren't right. So they had to be half inch finished and wow, <laughs> it got to be a joke actually. Hang tough, the needle thread break here. We all know how to thread our machines pretty quickly though, don't we? Well, did I mention the lighting was bad in here today? There we go. The needle threader on my machine has long since broken, which wasn't a big deal because honestly, I didn't use it anyway. had it in for maintenance last time. He said that he had noticed that it was broken, but he couldn't get the parts anymore. This is not a new machine, obviously, but that's all right because I honestly haven't used it. Now, as my eyes get older, that may change, understand, but for now I can still thread it by hand, I guess you might say. I do have a brother machine, a new, new-ish, I suppose it's a year and a half old now, a brother Stellaire, which is an XJ, S, X, XJ1 or something. Anyway, Stellaire. And it has an automatic needle threader, so all I have to do is push a button and it threads the needle. I have to get the thread to a certain point, but it just, every time it makes it, threads that needle, it's cool. Here we are. This one's a little narrower because I cut that piece a little more narrow. You could see that my piecing and pressing was better on the second one. And of course it's longer because we slid things around. But I like them both. What do you think? What do you think? Straighten those up a bit. Anyway, back to the challenge. Squirrel. I 
have some things in mind and it's going to be quite open. It'll be crumb or crazy, whatever size you want, however you want to interpret the prompt or the theme, embellish or not, as you like. And I'm, I've kind of done the themes or prompts, gone through each month and thought about what they might be. But we'll see. What do you think about a challenge? Challenges are good for me because they give me a goal. And doing a monthly challenge will give me that deadline. After I just said that the thing I like about <laughs> this is compared to my previous career is that I didn't have deadlines. Okay, that was not pressed all that well. So I'm gonna fix that. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Do you like one or two better? The shorter or the longer? I'm torn. I like them both. We're allowed to like both. It's okay. Now, of course, there are all sorts of other things that I could do. Oh, and this will wait for another day. But I could do sashing just for the single piece and then either flip it or rotate it. I don't know that it will be square, so maybe flip it vertically so that comes around. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. As I said, I have a lot of these triangles. So I can do any number of things. And if we were to talk about embellishing, which I know we haven't, and there's no reason why you would need to embellish it, especially if you're doing a modern kind of thing. But wouldn't these be great for just some stitching down here, either hand-stitched vines, and you could go crazy with beads and all different stitches, or on your sewing machine if you have some specialty embroidery stitches. I have about 250 of them on this machine. And I'm thinking about other stuff for what I might do on some crazy quilt blocks. My brain races with so many things, but I think this is going to be it for today. Once again, I failed to notice when I started this, but I think I can cut out a fair amount of it if I <laughs> don't make you watch me or listen to me so in the background. That's it for me for today. Thank you again for joining me. It's always fun to do these. It's a, a happy weekend activity for me. Thanks for joining me. Uh, remember to, to subscribe if you haven't already. I would appreciate that a lot. Thanks again for joining me and I hope I'll see you next time. Be well, be safe, be happy and be quoting. Peace out.